So uh, thanks for the organizers for providing me a platform to describe some of our findings. Uh, I think it's still the old title in the program, so from two years ago, and really admire the perseverance uh, from uh, Jay and uh, 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 from to, to make this uh, uh, meeting happen. So I'm going to talk about the stability of the cardiomyocyte uh, phenotype, so meaning what uh, controls the stability, can we reverse that, and can we exploit that also for regenerative purposes? So I had this uh, uh, question, yeah, is that really something that is completely sufficient uh, uh, to, to trigger to stage uh, regeneration uh, to, to uh, drive uh, the program back and uh, establish a more abryonic phenotype? I think, uh, in principle, yes, but I think there are also additional uh, things that are necessary. So we are actually quite obsessed about the stability of the cardiomyocyte phenotype and how you might also induce the differentiation, meaning a disassembly of the sarcomeres and allowing a, simply a more plastic uh, situation that would also allow cardiomyocytes uh, to divide. So several years ago, uh, we showed uh, that inflammatory cytokines or from the IL-6 uh, family derived from leukocytes can indeed induce a profound uh, de-differentiation, something that's also happening after myocardial infarction in the border zone. These are just a uh, few, uh, few slides, a uh, few uh, images uh, from this old paper, and just also in reference to Eldad uh, 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 yesterday. I mean, we can also in indeed uh, induce uh, redifferentiation even in culture where there is a very strong drive uh, for dedifferentiation of cardiomyocytes by adding, for example, uh, IGF-1, yeah, which will indeed even in vitro uh, induce uh, uh, redifferentiation. But what we also noticed uh, that these type of interventions are not sufficient uh, to induce uh, cytokinesis. I mean, we do see a certain degree of EDU uh, incorporation in such type of de-differentiated cardiomyocytes, but we never actually observed uh, cytokinesis. So even if we really strongly booster this process, uh, and this can be done actually by removing the microRNAs 133A uh, from uh, cardiomyocytes, which uh, repress under normal conditions uh, the receptors uh, for OSM, for oncostatin M, but also of, uh, of FGF. Uh, to a very strong uh, uh, degree. And if you remove uh, these uh, microRNAs, then you will have increased expression of the receptors, which are clearly like the FGF receptor pro-proliferation. Uh, but even then, although we see actually a very dramatic increase in the expression of different cell cycle genes, we never observed really bona fide cytokinesis in these really severely de-differentiated cardiomyocytes. And this is just to illustrate uh, that the effects of uh, these microRNAs indeed are mediated, these really strong uh, effects on, on, uh, on de-differentiation, that they're really mediated by these receptors. So we uh, generated a triple uh, knockout out mice in which we uh, inactivated on top of these two microRNA clusters also the OSM receptor and the FGF receptor. As you can see here, compared to the controls, there's a strong normalization if you look here at these different cell cycle-related uh, genes. If we inactivate, uh, for example, here the FGF re receptor 1 or the OSM receptor, you see that uh, different here from the microRNA 133 uh, double knockout cardiomyocytes, we have here normalization, which is more pronounced actually if we inactivate the OSM M receptor compared to the FGF, but they both, uh, which we also showed in the paper, cooperate uh, to establish uh, 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 this uh, rather massive phenotype. And similar to what also, also Eldad uh, told us yesterday, this is not a good thing uh, if we uh, induce the differentiation by removing uh, microRNA1 and 133 a then we also have a massive uh, cardiac failure after, after a couple of weeks because simply the contractility due to uh, sarcomere disassembly of the heart really drops and uh, the hearts uh, go into failure. So we thought uh, there might be better ways, stronger cues uh, to induce uh, uh, the differentiation of cardiomyocytes. And of course, one of the strongest known inducers of the differentiation, even uh, allowing uh, reprogramming of somatic cells uh, to S cells is expression of the uh, Yamanaka factors uh, OSKM. 
So that's what we used uh, to induce the differentiation using really brute force uh, to, uh, to allow uh, massive uh, de-differentiation. So the uh, mouse model that we used for that purpose allows, and that is really important in this context, uh, temporarily controlled expression. So meaning that you can switch on and switch off uh, OSKM and not just uh, let uh, expression of OSKM uh, going uh, for all the time. So this is uh, shown here how this works. So we can activate specifically by removing a stop flux uh, cassette, uh, uh, this whole uh, cassette here, uh, specifically in cardiomyocytes, and then the system here, OSKM expression, is dependent on, uh, on uh, doxycycline, uh, uh, doxycycline administration. And therefore, we can specifically in cardiomyocytes turn on and also turn off uh, OSKM expression. So we first uh, tried that with neonatal cardiomyocytes, and as you can see here in these time-lapse movies, that really boosts uh, the proliferation of neonatal cardiomyocytes. We have here really a major surge uh, after uh, treatment with uh, doxycycline, and without uh, doxycycline, you have only this modest uh, proliferation that you normally observe in neonatal cardiomyocytes. So then, of course, we switched to adult uh, cardiomyocytes, and it was a bit uh, of a surprise that we could indeed induce cytokinesis both in mono as well as in binucleated uh, cardiomyocytes. So these are just uh, still images from time-lapse movies. So this is a division of uh, mononucleated cardiomyocytes, but we also observed uh, not, not much lower degree, actually, also division of binucleated uh, cardiomyocytes. There were also some weird uh, uh, figures of cytokinesis where binucleated seemed to split in two binucleated, and uh, we have also uh, here a situation where we generated uh, more or less simultaneously binucleated cardiomyocytes from a mononucleated one. So, but we ever, never actually uh, in vitro uh, were able to induce uh, IPS uh, uh, cell formation, so full reprogramming uh, in vitro. This indeed happens uh, in vivo, so we get uh, tumors in the hearts, but interestingly, using isolated cardiomyocytes, even after extended periods, we were never able to induce IPS uh, formation. So dosage clearly matters. If we use heterozygous mice, so expressing the OSKM uh, cassette only from one allele, we had a lower rate of uh, cytokinesis compared to homozygous mice, where we essentially double uh, the uh, expression of OSKM. So I think this is also important also if one uses other means uh, to express uh, OSKM, so both uh, uh, timing as well as the dosage uh, matters a lot uh, to achieve uh, uh, the differentiation and also to achieve uh, 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 cytokinesis. So, of course, we also wanted to see whether this uh, works uh, in, in vivo and uh, also whether this is uh, reversible. So, in what we used, and this is an old marker that we already employ, um, employ since years, so we usually monitor the expression of smooth muscle actin, which is a typical, uh, typical marker also for, for, cardi for cardiomyocytes at early embryonic stages. The antibodies are great, so this is easy actually to use. And as you can see here, after treatment uh, with doxycycline of the mice uh, for six days, we see a strong uh, increased, a strongly increased expression of uh, smooth muscle, uh, smooth muscle actin, and this also goes along here with an increase in P3 uh, positive cardiomyocytes, and of course also EDU incorporation. If we continue to treat the mice, and this is now for 12 days, then there is enhanced uh, presence of these. Uh, uh, of this marker that indicates a uh, uh, rather immature cardiomyocyte uh, uh, phenotype. Uh, and, and this is important, if we then remove after, after six days uh, the doxycycline, then uh, we have here, here a complete uh, redifferentiation of the cardiomyocytes, at least based on, on this particular marker, so no expression of, uh, of smooth muscle actin anymore. However, and this is not shown here, but if we uh, continue to treat uh, with uh, doxycycline for 12 days 
and then remove uh, doxycycline, I mean, then we won't uh, achieve a full redifferentiation. And also the hearts eventually then go into failure. So again, it's really important uh, to adjust the dosage and also to have proper timing. If you overdo that, then obviously you pass a point of no return and it's not uh, possible anymore uh, to redifferentiate uh, fully uh, the cardiomyocytes. Of course, we looked uh, for transcriptional uh, changes, which are shown here, and this is all very well compatible with a more immature phenotype. So all the markers that you normally find in fetal and, uh, and uh, neonatal cardiomyocytes are, are going strongly up and typical maturation genes, uh, they, uh, they go down. So if you look uh, here at, uh, at different uh, gene classes, uh, different growth terms, then you see, as you would expect, uh, that cell cycle regulated, uh, cell, cycle, uh, cell cycle genes are going up, uh, cell division, all what you would expect. And also quite interesting, if you look at other terms here, we saw a pretty strong down regulation of fatty acid uh, uh, metabolism, uh, which is also a typical hallmark uh, of the metabolic uh, changes that occur uh, after, after birth uh, when uh, glycolytic uh, energy production changes uh, towards uh, oxidative respiration. Also here, along with that, uh, changes in mitochondrial genes and so on and so forth. So quite interesting, if you look here at such a principal component analysis and compare uh, different, uh, different groups uh, of uh, cardiomyocytes, so fetal, neonatal, uh, adult, and then also uh, these OSKM uh, expressing uh, cardiomyocytes. And you can see quite nicely that here without uh, DOCS, of course, yeah, no uh, OSKM expression, uh, uh, the samples are pretty similar to, uh, to adult. However, if we treat and, uh, with uh, doxycycline, then you see that the cardiomyocytes here in the principal component analysis lay somewhat uh, between neonatal and uh, embryonic day 14.5 uh, uh, cardiomyocytes. So this is, of course, just the sum of everything, but I think it clearly illustrates that we have indeed here uh, turned time back uh, to, a, to a, certain, a certain degree. And uh, again, if we compare here uh, uh, these uh, uh, OSKM reprogrammed uh, cardiomyocytes to embryonic day 14.5, neonatal and adults, then you can see very clearly that uh, with the DOCS uh, treatment here, we are pretty similar uh, now in terms of the expression uh, pattern uh, to E14.5 and to neonatal cardiomyocytes. And the adult ones and without uh, DOCS, uh, uh, they are really very, very uh, different. So uh, again, concerning the re reversibility, we do see actually a virtually a complete, uh, 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 complete reversal back uh, to, uh, uh, to the normal adult expression pattern if we terminate uh, OSKM expression after six days. So that's probably a little bit different if I understood uh, LDAT correctly uh, in comparison to RP2. So there is virtually, if you look here, okay, this is a Pearson correlation analysis, but also if you look uh, in detail into individual genes, we have virtually nothing uh, that is still uh, uh, expressed, uh, 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 no uh, fetal uh, genes that are still expressed uh, if we take uh, OSKM away. So it seems to be that this is uh, virtually a complete uh, shift either to a more uh, fetal phenotype or if you remove it uh, back uh, to adult stages. There are very few genes and it's not, uh, not really striking uh, that uh, maintain to be expressed at a slightly, at a slightly different level. So of course we wanted to, uh, to, to check whether indeed uh, this reprogramming repro uh, to a more, uh, more fetal, more uh, neonatal stage uh, enables also heart regeneration. And so we devised actually uh, four different uh, schemes, uh, the control of course, then a pretreatment where we induced uh, OSKM expression before myocardial infarction, then an acute treatment. So we started here OSKM expression uh, uh, concomitantly with the LID ligation and then something that we call therapeutic treatment where expression of OSKM uh, is induced only seven days after LID ligation. 
And as you can see here, with the pretreatment, uh, we indeed had the best results, so a reduction of the scar area. With the acute treatment, we still see an improvement, so a reduction of, of the scar, but with the therapeutic treatment, meaning seven days after, after LID ligation, we didn't see an improvement or no reduction uh, of, the, of the scar size. So when we do a functional MRI uh, to look uh, indeed for ejection fraction and uh, ability of the heart uh, to increase uh, contractility, and it's uh, pretty clear, we, again, with the pretreatment, uh, we have, uh, have here uh, a, a pretty strong improvement of, uh, of ejection fraction. When we use acute treatment, there is still uh, a clearly a therapeutic value, but uh, when we only start the treatment uh, seven days after LID ligation, there is no a significant improvement uh, compared uh, to, the, uh, to, the, to the controls. So that uh, is a bit difficult uh, to, to understand. If I, if I uh, look at, at other data, where also after scar formation an improvement has been uh, reported after initiation of, uh, of scar formation, there might be other uh, processes involved. I mean, we are currently trying also to uh, get rid of the fibrosis to use this CAR T cell approach uh, that John Epstein uh, uh, described, or triggering additional uh, inflammatory responses at later stages to weaken the, the scar. And maybe under such conditions, we can even uh, achieve after uh, after a later time at a later time point an improvement. So just to to summarize uh, what I, what I told you. So obviously, it's, it's indeed possible uh, to reprogram the heart, also to redifferentiate adult cardiomyocytes. However, there seems to be, at least in this particular model, a point of no return, where you cannot reverse anymore uh, the phenotype uh, to a normal state. We don't really understand what the reason behind that is. There might be some epigenetic changes that cannot be reversed. It might also be that the heart, which gets, uh, as I told you, in a more and more uh, devastating state uh, since the contractility is, is dropping so strongly that there is then some feedback uh, that prevents uh, redifferentiation of, uh, of cardiomyocytes and that's something that we're currently uh, looking into. And of course, uh, as with all these IPS uh, uh, approaches, we have really to, uh, to be careful to avoid uh, tumor formation. If we treat the, the mice for too long, in addition to this inability for reversal of the phenotype, there is tumor formation, so timely uh, uh, limitation of the treatment is absolutely essential. So just to give credit to the people to, uh, to, who did the work, so this was actually mostly uh, done by uh, Jan Poo Chen, very talented uh, PhD student, was his PhD thesis. So Jan Poo was co-supervised by, by Johnny Kim, who was a senior postdoc in my lab, has now its own group. And the microRNA part, it's mostly the PhD work of uh, Melissa. And with that, I'm at the end, and thank you for your attention. <laughs>